Father, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Oh God, King of Glory, we thank you that you, we thank you for the night that you protected us since yesterday. We also pray that you may guide us throughout the lesson, that you may understand whatever you're going to teach us. And we will put it into practice and make so very well in our exams. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Father, Son, the Holy, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much, Maria, and the rest of you. Uh, very happy to see you once again or to hear from you once again. Uh, Wendy, good morning. Good morning, sir. Yes, very good. You are loud and clear. And I think everyone can hear me very well. So last time when you looked at three dimension on Sunday, I sent you some questions. Uh, Cynthia, did you see the questions? Yes. I think everyone saw those questions because I pasted them in your groups. So I wanted you to, to practice those numbers. And also, if you have, you have finished, you can send me the answers on my WhatsApp number. And we can have a discussion, never know. I'm also planning to create a, an online examination portal where students are able to do tests and exams online. So you sit for one hour. <laughs> You sit for one hour and each question has something like uh, five minutes. And once five minutes elapse, you have to go to the next question. And then at the end of one hour, the, you are finished doing that paper. So you submit and you submit, you get your marks from there and then no need of waiting for someone to mark and what, no, no, no. So with the time, <laughs> with the time. <laughs> With the time, mm. it, it will be. I don't know how you feel about it. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. So let me try and share with you what we are supposed to cover today. Um, let me share the whole screen. Okay. So today we are supposed to look at uh, the. Cynthia, they are called what? What are they called, Cynthia? If you do remember. Yes, teacher. Today we are supposed to look what? Circle what? A circle properties. Today we are circle supposed to... properties. Yes, today we are supposed to look at circle properties. I hope you can see on the left hand side, that's where we have the notes and on the right hand side, that's where we are going to use to present to you what, we, what, what I'm going to be writing. So circle properties, the other time we looked at circles and said just a circle and we looked at different uh, components of this circle, the area, we looked at the, we looked at the sector, we looked at the arc the minor arc and also the mm, the major arc and also the major uh, sector so uh maybe it's for you to remember very well uh a circle has got area and the area of a circle is given by if you can remember very well if we are looking at circles then the area of a circle is given by pi r squared full stop pi r squared that's the area of a circle pi r squared this is the area okay and then uh we say that what's a sector a sector is just part of the circle that is enclosed by two red eye and the arc part of the circle that is enclosed by the two red eye and the arc so if this is the circle here and we have two red eye. This is a radius R, radius R. And then we have what we call a sector. So we have this small one here. This small one is called the minor, minor sector. Okay. The minor sector. 
sector. minus sector yes code is a minor sector it's called the minor sector then this other one here is called the major sector so you can see that this area which i've shaded is enclosed mm -hmm. by two red eye this and this so this is the area and also this area which is unshaded is enclosed by the two red eye this and this so this side this part which is unshaded is called the major sector and this part which is shaded is called the minor sector in other words the bigger sector here the bigger sector is called the major sector and the smaller sector here is called the minor the minor sector, sector. okay now how would you find how would you find the area of the minor sector so if you are to find the area of the minor sector area or minor sector area of minor sector the area of the minor sector will be given by area equals to so if this is the angle at the center that these two uh that these two red eye are subtending it from the center and say this angle is theta are we together that angle is theta so the area of this minor sector here of this minor sector is given by theta the angle there theta out of the angle sum at the center which is 360 then times pi r squared times the area of the circle which is pi r squared so there you get theta out of 360 pi r squared so that's the area of the minor sector if this is the angle theta then if this side is theta 2 if you know the angle of this side that it is theta 2 then for you to find the area of this major sector here so there if you say area of the major sector area of major this is what we looked at last time i'm just going through so that you can remember area of the major sector so it's going to be area equals to theta 2 out of 360 then pi r squared that would be the area of the major sector so in other words if this is theta and this and the angle sum here is 360 so that means that you have to just subtract 360 minus theta to get to this angle here if this is theta and you want to find theta 2 so it means that you have to just subtract 360 minus theta and you get theta 2 so there it means theta 2 equals to 360 minus theta that's what it means okay so that's how we get to the area now we have what we call the minor arc and also the major arc so this one is called the from here up to here is what we call the minor arc this one here that is the minor arc so i call this one minor arc and i call this one here from here all the way up to this side sorry all the way up to this side is what we call the major arc so you can check in the notes here they are trying to elaborate it for you very well there when you check in the notes what we call the minor arc and also the major arc uh, i think i've gone too far So somewhere here so you can see this is what you call the minor arc this small one here this was this is what we call the major uh the minor sector here the shaded one the major sector which is unshaded and the minor arc, and the major arc this other one here on this other side that's the major arc okay so what are what is uh are they saying so we did some uh, uh question there to find the area of the sector and it's a matter of knowing this angle which is here and then you substitute in that formula and you get the answer you should also know the radius uh you should know the radius and then you substitute in pi r where r is the radius and you get the answer now remember very well in p1 you looked at what we call circumference and we say that circumference is given by pi g circumference c circumference c so c is given by 
pi d but you know that diameter 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 d is equal to 2 pi what 2 r so it's equal to 2 r 2 times the radius so it means the circumference is equal to pi times 2 r and you get circumference is equal to 2 pi r so that's what you normally use the circumference is equal to pi r and then the circumference you know that it is just the perimeter around that circle the perimeter around that circle or the distance around that circle circumference then we can get part of that circle in other words we can get an arc arc is just part of the circumference arc is part of the circumference of a circle so you can get the length of the arc so for instance if this is the circle here you can just get part of it, part of it, the distance from here up to here, from A to B, uh, that distance, this is the center. So the distance from here up to here, we can get that length L. So this, this distance from A to B is what we call the arc length. The distance is what we call the arc length, but from A to B is what we call the arc. It's just part of the circle circumference part of the circumference so for you to get the the length of the arc so you need to know that to get the length of the arc length air is given by so you should know first of all if this is if this is the circle and we have two red eye there and here so we have r here and r here and in between these two red eye, there is an angle there, theta. In between there, an angle theta. So for you to get the distance from A to B, or to get the length L, or to get the arc length, you must know this angle theta. So that angle theta <clears throat> should help us to determine the arc length. And we also, we should know the, circum the circumference. What is the distance around this circle? You should know the circumference such that you can use now the angle theta out of the angle sum which is 360 then times the circumference of the circle which is c so it means that a will be equal to theta out of 360 then times 2 pi what 2 pi r 2 pi r so that this formula here or that kind of expression this kind of expression should be able to give you the length from a to be another should be able to give you what we call the arc what the arc the arc length the arc length the arc length from a to b uh, indicated as l is given by theta divided by 360 then times the circumference of the whole circle of the whole circle so you should note down these formulas very well if i may help you and summarize for you these formulas you should remember those formulas very well that area of a circle, area of a circle. I remember when I was teaching someone some time back, it's what you used to do. Area of a circle is equal to pi r squared. Area of a sector equals to theta out of 360 pi r squared. <laughs> then what else? <clears throat> Circumference. Circumference C equals to pi D, or we can say circumference C is equal to pi R. Okay. Then also the other thing is arc length, arc length R equals to theta out of 360 times the circumference, which is 2 pi R something like that so you should know these formulas very well because we are going to be using them we are going to be using them okay let us proceed <clears throat> so i remember so i remember last time uh, we stopped on this question here. And this question was just asking you to find the arc length of a given circle. So 
in other words, here they had given you the, the angle that is in between the two radii, and that angle was 140, which is at the center of the circle of radius 12 centimeters. And they're asking you to find the arc length, to find the arc length. So they have given you that, uh, that there is an angle theta. So if we are to solve this, we first get the information that is written in the question. So the first information that is given to the question is the angle. And our angle is theta, which is equal to 140 degrees. The other information that is in the question is, they're saying that this angle is at the center of a circle of radii of radius, radius 12 centimeters. So the second thing is the radius, which is 12 centimeters. And they're asking you now to find the arc length, the arc length, the arc length air, arc length air. So the first thing that you should remember very well is your formula. How do you get arc length? Arc length is given by theta over 360 times 2 pi r. So it is theta out of 360 times 2 pi r. And we can see that from there, we have everything. We have that angle theta, and we also have the radius. So the best thing that we are going to do is the best thing we are going to do is we are going to substitute and we shall say that from that point, we shall say that our air or the arc length is equal to 140 out of 360 times two, then times 22 out of seven. We are going to take our pi as 22 out of say, seven. We don't use the other one, which is in form of decimals because the one which is in form of decimals is likely to induce some errors in your answer. So what we do, we write the one which is in fraction form so that we don't have errors in our answer. So we shall have 22 over seven as our pi, then times the radius, which is 12 centimeters. And from there, from our P1 mathematics, we can do the simple mathematics here. And we cancel this zero with that one. Isn't it? Members, are we together? Yes. Yes. So we are together. Very good. So by seven, we have one. And then by seven here, we have two. OK? All right. Yes. So we can decide to multiply this 2 times 2 times 22 times 12, 2 times 2 times. So R equals 2, 2 times 2 times 22 times 12 out of 36. And we see what we get. And what do you get, members? R equals to the final answer is 29. What do you get? I'm getting 29.333. Do you have the same? 29. That side? Yes, please. Okay. Yes, we have that. I have 29.33. Yes, so 29.3 Rika. Recurrent, isn't it? Recurrent. Is recurrent. So that means that our air will be equal to 29 and a third. A third. As our answer, but these are centimeters. centimeters. Okay, that's how we get the length of an arc or the arc length. So let us proceed to the next section here. Patricia, good morning. Sandra, Sandra, good morning. Good morning, sir. Okay. Patricia, are you fine? 
Patricia, I hope you are awake and I hope you are you are in a good position to hear me very well. So let us proceed and we look at the code of a circle. The code of a circle. A circle. So let, let us look at the code. Code of a circle. Code of a circle. Good. So what's what do you understand by the term code of a circle? So before reading, before reading what is there, let me just use the diagram and then just show you <laughs> code of a circle. I just want to, to hide these words, but I cannot hide them. Okay. So A to B is the code. Do you see the line from A to B? Do you see the line from A to B? Yes. 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 That is what we call the code of a, a circle. So the code of a circle is a line that joins two points on a circumference. So there are two points on a circumference, and that line joins them. There's one point here, A, and there is another point here, B. So the line that joins those two points is what we call the code of a circle, the code of a circle, the code of a circle. Uh, you can see clearly that, if I may try to magnify that, for me, I like magnifying things, and then you can see clearly. So you can see from A to B, it is just a line. Now. When that line is drawn, that line is going to create two parts of the circle. Let me show you very well. So if this is my circle and I draw it using my compass, which I've just bought recently, and I know that in the middle there, where the compass was standing is where I have the center. So somewhere there, that's where I have my center. Now, what you should know is that any line that is drawn, it can be here like this, and I draw it from here up to here. It can be here like this, draw it from here up to here. It's going to create two parts, one part which is here, another part which is this side. So if I draw it the way it is drawn there in our notes, So something like that, and I have A, B. So A, B is the code. Now A, B, a moment, Cynthia, you can start discussing with your friends there.
Okay. All right. So now let us proceed. So A B is what we call a chord. A B is what we call a chord. From point A to B is what we call a chord. Now it creates two areas. The first area, which is this side, you see this 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 area which is here, is what we call uh, a segment. This is what we call a segment, and also this one is what we call a segment. So the areas that are created by this two by this chord, those two areas are what we call segments. But the smaller area. This smaller area, which is this side, if I may try to shade it for you the way it is shaded there, this small area, which is this side, is what we call the, the minor segment. So this one is called the minor, minor segment. Segment is with G, okay, segment. I want you to know that whatever is small is called minor. The other time we looked at the arc, and we say the arc which was small is what we call the minor arc. So something that is small is called the minor. So, it, But we know that this part of the circle here is called a segment. So it means that this smaller part is what we call the minor segment. Then this other one, which is this side, is what we call the major, say, major segment. The major segment. The major segment. Now, we should know that here they have noted with the letter C here, just for you to uh, just to define for you that the the area ABC ABC is what we call the minor is what we call the minor segment and then this other area AB A to B is what we call the major se segment the major segment. Now what you should know is that from point A to point B there are radii that are subtend that area that line so we have a certain radius from A and also another radius from, from A, from B to the center. So from point B, from point B to the center O, we have a radar. So these radii are equal. So it means that this distance here, R, is equal to this distance, which is here, R. So what comes to your mind here? If I may try to... So here they are saying that the line AB is a chord. It is a line segment joining two points of a circumference of a circle. So OB is what and OA are the radius of the circle. Then the angle, sorry, the triangle AOB is an isosceles triangle. So we have seen that if OA is equal to OB, then it means that these sides are equal. If these sides are equal, then the triangle AOB is an isosceles tri triangle. So we can say triangle AOB is an iso isosceles, it's an isosceles triangle. Okay. Why? Because the sides, the two sides of that circle are the radius and they are equal. Now, they say that, back to the notes here, the area of a circle cut off by a chord is what we call the segment. So this area cut off by the chord is what we call the segment. In the diagram, in the diagram, the minor segment is shaded and the major segment is unshaded, is unshaded. Area of the shaded part. So how do we get the area of this shaded part? So it means that area of the shaded part will be equal to the area of the sector A, O, B, C minus the area of the triangle A or B. So what does this one mean? What does this one mean? So this one means that for you to find the area of the shaded part, the shaded part we are talking about is A, B, C, this shaded part. So for you to find the area of the shaded part, it means that you have to first get the area of the sector. 
what is our sector in that diagram? Our sector is this region from point O, point B, point C, point A, and then back to O. So if I may first draw for you this, uh, this circle before drawing that, let me show you. Okay, Patricia is asking, how do you know that is an isosceles triangle? Who can answer for me that question? How do you know that is an isosceles triangle? Who can answer for me that question? How do you know that is an isosceles triangle? Yes. It Anyone? To equal sides. Uh -huh. Very good, Alexandria. Patricia, have you heard? I know you've heard. Yes. So it is because this this kind of triangle that we are seeing here, A or B, is made up of two sides. This side OA and this other side OB. So these two sides, which are part of the triangle A or B, these two sides are equal. Why are they equal? Because they are the radius of the circle. So from O to A is a radius, and also from O, to B is a, ra a radius. What's a radius? A radius is a line that is drawn from the center of the circle to the one point at the arc of that circle or touching the circumference of that circle. So the distance from point, from the center, from point O, which is the center, to a point on the circumference, which is point B, that distance is called the, ra the radius. So OB is a radius, and also OA is a, ra a radius. So it means that OA and OB are equal because they are radii of the circle, meaning that the triangle, which is OBA, is an isosceles tri triangle. Patricia, you can just give me a thumbs up if you have understood that. Now, let us proceed here. I was still telling you that for us to find the area of the shaded part, we need to first get the area of the sector. So let me draw for you the sector they are talking about for those people who joined later on uh, before we had before we had started. Sorry, bef uh, those ones who joined after we had started. So let me first show you. So I'm drawing, this is O and this is A. I'm drawing this same circle here, but I want you to understand where is the sector that we are talking about. Okay. And this is point B. Okay. Now, this is what we call a sector. This one. That's what we call a sector. This region here. I can shade it for you to see it very well. So this is what we call a sector. This one. That's a sector. So if we can determine the angle which is here, theta, then we can get the area of that sector. And the area of this sector is given by area or sector will be equal to will be equal to theta. Mm -hmm. Cynthia, theta mm -hmm. out of 360. Mm -hmm. Times pi r squared. Correct, times pi r squared. So theta out of 360 times the area of the whole circle, all times pi r squared. That will give us the area of this area of this sector. And now, if we want to find this area which is shaded here, that means that now, there is a triangle. So we have to find the area of this triangle here, the area of this triangle. So how do we get the area of that triangle? So if we have a triangle here that is drawn, so it means that we have to find the area of this, tri area of this triangle here. So to get the area of that triangle,
triangle is so the area is given 